na na Okay, uh, before we start, kepada semua partisipan, uh, this is a general house rule, yeah? uh, yang pertama kena uh, mute voice or uh, audio supaya tidak mengganggu the overall um, forum kita pada pagi ini. So we will start around 10.5 minutes, uh, 10.35, masih menunggu lagi mungkin ada sedikit problem on the punya access one of the our panels. So, mohon uh, kepada semua partisipan, uh, yang paling penting is to mute your your mic or your voice uh, device in your handphone or in your laptop, please. Okay. Hello. Hello, ya. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly, yeah? Uh, Tuan Haji Isan, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very clear. Okay. Okay, moderator, please start. Okay, please start, eh? Okay, shall we start? Okay, yeah, kita akan start dalam 30 seconds from now. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam Ramadan al mubarak. And a very good morning to distinguished panelists and all participants. Welcome to Town Hall Forum organized by Malaysian Institute of Planners (MIP) and Board of Town Planners (LPBM). I'm Alias Meramli from Research and Development Division, Plan Malaysia. Currently stationed at Satellite Office in Johor Bahru, will be your moderator for one and a half hour live streaming via Cisco WebEx meeting platform with full house of 200 registered participants and currently also can be viewed through YouTube live channel. So, uh, so for registered participants, please do note to your clicks and your friends to ensure that they also have opportunity to be with us in this town hall forum. So today we will discuss a very important and pressing agenda related to the process of urban de development with the title, what is the new normal for urban planning? I'm sure that talking about uh, urban, it is not only a responsibility of town planners, but also involve very professional. And to discuss this uh, today, together with us, today, three prominent uh, panelists, that is, uh, the first one is Yang Berbahagia Datuk Town Planner Muhammad Anwar bin Maidin, Director General Plan Malaysia and also the Chairman of Board of Town Planners Malaysia. Apa khabar Datuk? Datuk bersiaran daripada mana ni? Daripada uh, Ultrajaya atau ya, daripada Cyberjaya? Uh, daripada uh, Work at Home, ya, Doktor. Terima kasih. Okay. Uh, terima kasih dan uh, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everybody. Glad to be with you today. Okay, thank you. Dah macam new normal ni. Okay, uh, uh, panelist yang kedua. The second panelist is uh, Tom Planner Haji Ehsan bin Zainal Mokhtar, President uh, Malaysian Institute of Planners. Oh, okay. I think you are stationed in Shalat, huh? Tuan Haji Ehsan. Tuan Haji Ehsan. Are you in Shalam, Tuan Haji Ehsan? Yes, I am in Shalam. Uh, we have okay. problem. Okay, okay, so it's okay. Okay, thank you, Claire. And the third speaker, uh, our panelist is Professor Tom Planner, Dr. Jamalun Laili bin Abdullah, commonly called as any Prof. J. I think Prof. also surrounded uh, uh, in surrounding Shah Alam. Prof. J. Uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, okay, uh, Doctor and uh, everyone. Uh, I'm working from home uh, from Kota Damansara. Okay, Kota Damansara. Okay, thank you very much, uh, um, Prof. J. Thank you. So before we start, uh, let me uh, briefly on the, to explain about the, uh, the topic today. So today, everyone, all fields and sector talking about the new normal. For American, Ajay uh, Ehsan and uh, Prof. J, uh, they normally prefer to use the word next normal. There are many school of thoughts when discussing this subject. And for me, personally, and generally, uh, New normal comes from the outcome of the process 
of change from normal or common to uncommon and then to not uncommon and at the end becomes a common normal or a norm so while all parties now in the era of pandemic COVID-19 and movement control or PKP or MCO on thinking find ways and set a new normal for their respective uh, fields this certainly no exception for town planners in particular in the field of urban planning town planners have to act in the next normal and cannot continue business as usual so today i think it's very timely for us to discuss about this subject and uh, thank you much for the, all the um, panelists ladies and gentlemen uh, before we start two reminders from me one you have to mute your to the participant you have to mute your voice or sound in your device please help on this one and the second one if, if you have views and question you can post it either through chat box in webex current uh, web meeting platform or through live chat in your uh, in youtube live channel uh, use by typing the MIPTC online town hall forum. Okay. So, okay, now we start with the first round of the forum uh, by getting a commencement uh, general views by the panelists before we go to the real subject matters to explain generally on the situation of pandemic COVID 19 and MCO by the government. And to describe personal, probably you have your personal experience uh, or pers uh, family experience in responding to the current MCO by the government, or other, th other things uh, or behavior that has changed you. And uh, probably you can just uh, give brief uh, understanding of a new normal, um, uh, definition of new normal from, from your perspective. And now I start with the um, uh, first panelist, uh, Dr. Uh, TPR uh, Muhammad Anwar bin Maiden, to speak around two, three minutes. Uh, before we um, for this uh, round one, okay, you are please. So, Mama. Okay, uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Assalamualaikum, everybody. Uh, very, very good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, Doctor Alias has mentioned about the new normal. Uh, what to replace or what to expect to use technicals uh, after the event occurs, and according as you see, urban day three uh, 2018, he said that the new normal encourage one to deal with the current situation rather than implementing what could have been. So in the planning process or in our, in, as a DG of the town planning office, uh, I bet we, our that uh, we have uh, to plan, we have to control or guide the developments and we also have to review all the planning we have done. So everything is actually after this uh, COVID-19 or during the COVID-19, the way of the words or the way the process of the world has begun to uh, be a new chapter. Uh, and the three most important thing in planning, we have, as I said just now, that we have to plan. Uh, and uh, to plan, we have to communicate for the people with the people and to the people. So we need the communication, engagement, and so on. And the third and is delivery, how we can deliver our planning to the stakeholders or to the peoples. So things that we have to look in the process at the beginning of the, what you talk about this, uh, the, the new normal of planning, that everything we have done right now, we have to change, we have to review, and we have to revise. Uh, in terms of the procedures, in terms of the definitions, and so on. Uh, that's all from, from now, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Um, now we go to the second panelist, uh, Tuan Aji Esan. You have your own um, maybe observation on this, on the new normal concept. Yeah, please, Tuan Aji Esan. has not changed can you hear me now 
Okay, Ken. Boleh? Okay. Uh, okay, Ishan. So in, in terms in terms of work, um, uh, the type of work that we do is still the same, but the medium has changed. Meaning that like what we are doing now, there's a lot more communication online. There's a lot more uh, discussion online because planning, as as uh, KP uh, clearly stated just now, involves a lot of discussion, involves a lot of meetings. So the design part we can do at home, the research part we can do at home. Uh, but we do need to coordinate between each other. We do need to talk between each other. And uh, today, I, uh, I read a report saying that actually working online, you are working more hours than usual uh, compared to when you work uh, in, in the office uh, because you're constantly um, uh, on call, uh, if, if, uh, if I may put it that way. So I think um, uh, for, for, for us, uh, our work, it has made it more in, intense, if you like. We have to be more involved. Uh, we have to be up to the mark. We have to do a lot of readings, tests. Uh, the new normal requires actually uh, uh, more commitment, more communication, uh, more coordination, but the medium is online. So I hope um, our authorities can make sure that our Wi-Fi capabilities, uh, the speed, uh, the glitches can be minimized. So I, I think that's... Uh, my opening remark. No. Okay, thank you, uh, Tuan Raja Ishan. Prof J, um, probably Prof J have uh, your own experience uh, on uh, current uh, when the government imposed the uh, MTO. You probably have changed certain things. Your family maybe have changed. Um, and the second one probably on the uh, I call the um, the fundamental of new normal. Okay, please, uh, Prof J. Okay, uh, semua orang kata, and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, uh, saya the ni lah the new normal daripada sisi education punya ni. Uh, Ella macam aji Esan, uh, tiba aji Esan mention just now. It require more of the coordination. Uh, dan coordination ni dan uh, thing uh, UITM ni quite unique. Uh, dan saya dalam capacity saya sebagai apa? They can FSPU ni, so we have to deal dengan macam 10 different departments and then 10 different professional bodies and boards and then so have to coordinate with them in terms of their requirement macam architecture different punya QS lain dan apa kita pun tak planning pun quite different punya tu so Alhamdulillah we managed to coordinate that dan as well as we managed to coordinate dengan apa campus FSPU ni kita ada di lima lokasi lah di apa Syah Alam pun Syah Alam, uh, Sri Iskandar, Arau dan Kota Samarhan uh, but somehow is uh, the new normal ni seems like we we have managed to get a lot of things done uh, surprisingly and apa early on dulu memang banyak ni lah isu-isu uh, ni lah buat benda ni all of a sudden but turn out that I think we learn uh, quite a lot of things in uh, in a short time. So, kami rasakan bahawa the new normal ni, this is apa is going to be the face of higher education in the future. And uh, kita dah start daripada dulu lagi. Uh, macam apa, MOOC massive open online uh, course. Uh, but only a few courses are willing to volunteer. Now this time, bila UITM made the decision that Everybody have to do it, then they have no choice. But I think, Alhamdulillah, we're able to do it. So uh, it's going to be like the new face of higher education in Malaysia. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. J. Cuma my comment, Prof. J. Some of the uh -huh. UITM students, including my, my daughter. Lah. The daughter, they said that they complain on the uh, studio, no, uh, class meeting from start from 9 o'clock, uh, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 30 in the morning. I think quite mm -hmm. difficult for them. They normally work, work uh, at night, not at the at the day. <laughs> That's a general comment from from students. But uh, okay. actually, now the, we actually practice the new normal. Uh, uh, organizing a webinar, a forum like this online is already a practice of the uh, new normal. Okay, thank you, Prof. Jay. Okay, okay now, thank uh, you. To the panel. Okay, uh, I'm go to uh, now go to the uh, more serious um, subject for the second round. So panelists are given around 15 minutes uh, to um, address your points. And uh, my question actually is to answer two questions of what. 
to the panelists. Okay, the question number one, what are the urban planning activities, a process, a procedures, a governance, etc., that have to be changed, improved to accommodate the approach of new normal or potential new normal in the era of uh, PKP and post PKP after this? That first question about the activities. The second question is, what are the new normal for the system and process of planning, delivery, and communication? I mean, activities related to organizing meeting, program, lecture, conducting survey, focus group discussion, uh, probably a new publicity methods, and uh, the, the agencies probably also need the uh, option, new option in me our media plan. And, and other uh, uh, system in the context of the time delivery system. Okay, that's, so to answer the uh, question of what first. So um, uh, panelists can answer uh, uh, question one and two together because we are, we are very limited in terms of time. So I start with uh, Professor uh, Dato um, Anwar B. Maiden, uh, Director General of uh, Prime Malaysia. You are pleased, Dato. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Doctor talk about this uh, urban planning and uh, what the process have to be changed. Uh, uh, we at the town planning office, normally we, what we work, what we have done is according to the what is said by the uh, 172 or Town and Planning Country Act. That has to be uh, certain procedures have to follow according to the Act, the development plan. Uh, how to control the developments, how to make a submission, and so on. So, uh, in according to this procedure, we have to think how that uh, we have to do the new style of work or new process, but uh, by the existing regulation. And of course, if you, to, you want to change the law, you have to change the procedure in work uh, uh, times. But uh, maybe in the process of doing it. Uh, first of all, maybe uh, we talk about the planning activities. Huh? Um, we talk about the density in the planning. So uh, we see that actually one of the contribution of the pandemic right now is because of the concentration of the people, uh, too many people in a certain area. We talk about the very high density uh, populated area. So this is actually the factor that's uh, uh, bring uh, this uh, pandemic. Uh, so uh, the high density uh, should be the density, but uh, it's happened in New York, Singapore, and so also in Europe. But uh, at the same time, we see that uh, let uh, the, the South, Hong Kong they also have the high density population, but uh, the pandemic uh, is still controlled. Uh, it's not happened like what other state experience in the other country. Um, the density actually is not the sole proprietor. This is actually the governance, how we govern the people. And uh, uh, also regarding with this density and so on, have, uh, certain guidelines, uh, like the residential guidelines, um, uh, TODs and so on. This is, I think, we have to take into uh, into the table, back to the table, we have to review. We have to see what is actually can be enhanced as, as, as the further thing that uh, I think the most important thing that we can use it uh, to make sure that uh, this uh, tragedy uh, can be minimized in the future. And um, look into uh, the transportation systems. Yeah? I think the mobility, the mobility, the mass sense uh, uh, of the people by cars and so on is the main factor of the. Uh, so, what the government do right now, KPK or MMC, to stop the people from moving? Uh, we have the uh, transportation facilities. Uh, so this is actually uh, one of the factors that we have, uh, have to look into. Like, uh, maybe we have to look into the uh, bike and walking. 
uh, maybe the, peop the, the people can use, uh, um, I think that can uh, minimize the, the movement uh, by doing this, uh, uh, the 50 minute cities or what we call it, this uh, neighborhood unit. We, we have to go back to the, the original uh, concept, the, the neighborhood planning that everything or the facilities and the site will be in the 50 minute walk. So they have to they have, they have to go to the other town more than 10 kilometers and so on using the cars, the public transport and so on. I think uh, this is a thing that uh, also only work in our uh, guidelines. And um, uh, right now, uh, People, uh, some, some, some people losing the, uh, living at the lower density area uh, have a time, it's, this is capital time to make gardening, uh, uh, to do the planting. And I, I, I think uh, this is a, I a very good concept that we have to think about this, um, what we call this Kajidanan uh, Hijau. We go to the neighborhood planting. I think we can provide this. Uh, Sayo Sayo runs uh, an easy way uh, that you have to need to go to the market or to wait to the other source for the other places. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we, when we, we plan for town of the settlements uh, or the housing. Area, we have to think about more area for uh, urban plantings and so on. Uh, also the urban gardenings, neighborhood gardenings and so on. Uh, um, and uh, if you see that uh, we, we are lucky in Malaysia, we are lucky in Malaysia we have a lot of uh, uh, what we call the facilities uh, that uh, we have the place to put the people and the PUI because we have a lot of the training centers, we have the facilities, and I think this is I think that we have to uh, we have to emphasize in the new planning we of the urban or government amenities, especially the community hall, uh, training centers, and so on. Because at this time, I think uh, really need this type of uh, the places. Eh? And um, I talked already about this uh, agriculture and farming in the city. Maybe we can look into uh, this uh, um, subject. And um, right now, we are doing the uh, live conferencing. Uh, what we need is a uh, telecommunication technology, the G digital infrastructure. Uh, this is, I think, uh, in the planning, we have to redo some of the guidelines regarding with the maybe the, the last uh, guidelines regarding with the telecommunication pools and so on is outdated and maybe not. Uh, uh, accordingly, what we need today with the, with the existing with the future technology, we talk about the 5G and so on. So I think uh, what we need right now is the uh, uh, digital infrastructure improvement uh, because we are actually communicate, uh, we are delivering using this uh, type of technology. And uh, um, of course, uh, we, we facing the problems about migrants, uh, workers, uh, well, migrant workers, uh, about this, um, as you see, I think the experience in Singapore, uh, Singapore, they have the two dormitory at Punggol. This is actually one of the, they, they, they received the dormitory awards in 2018. I think the most cases happen in Singapore right now is in this, uh, where, whereas in 22nd April, uh, nine, six, seven foreign workers in that single dormitory. And it, 1,422 uh, uh, convicted uh, in this uh, uh, COVID-19. So um, this is because of the high capacity, uh, 4,000 to 5,000. And this actually, the guidelines or the developments of the dormitory homes also be followed by the other state, especially in Penang. So we have we must be very careful about this one. And uh, Panduan Perumahan Pekerja that what I have done by the Plan Malaysia. Maybe to look into because um, right now, uh, I think the, 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 the main issue is uh, we talk about this uh, 
also about the density, but the, also the governance, how they manage that facilities. Uh, um, do I have a time, doctor? How, how, how much of time I have right now, doctor? Okay, uh, it's okay. I would like to continue. Maybe um, during uh, like we, I said just now that uh, we have to concentrate on the provision of the government amenities and make sure all the government lands, the government lands or the especially in the big area must be reserved for that purposes. Um, and also, uh, we talk about this uh, communication. Okay, um, uh, based on, on the, our experience right now, uh, the plan manager actually what, what we, are, we are talking about now actually is the is uh, online with our tagline plan manager uh, planning beyond conventional. Yeah, doctor. Yeah. So uh, we talk about the beyond conventional. I think before uh, pandemic, before the COVID nineteen. But uh, what is the beyond conventional? So this is what we are, we are, we are, we are doing that uh, we have to do the virtual meeting using Skype, WebEx, and Google Meet, and, and so on. And uh, But the problems, maybe we have to, what, what we have. Now we move to the okay, okay, speaker. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tuan Najib Isan, I think you, you have responsibility to take care of, I think, near 1,000 of um, private planners in this country. So um, during the preamble, uh, you have uh, give your uh, general points on next normal or new normal. So back to the question, uh, number one, what are the urban planning activities that need to change to accommodate the new normal? And the second one is, how about the, uh, what are the uh, system and process, uh, specifically on the planning delivery and uh, communication, that some of the points actually already touched by Dato uh, Muhammad Anwar tadi. So, yeah, please, Tuan uh, Diagisan. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I think during the beginning of the MCO, uh, most of us were, were caught. Uh, I'm talking about now if we were to do the physical planning, the submissions online, uh, most of the systems cannot accommodate. There was a lot of comp complaint about that. So, even the local authorities, not all of the local authorities have the capability uh, nor the hardware uh, to to manage online submissions. Uh, those in the Klang Valley already have the capability and they are ready uh, for online submissions. So to understand, it's not only the submitting but the processing. So as as in uh, research uh, work, uh, the physical planning work also involves the same. They have to coordinate with all the technical departments. Now, even if the local authority is up to mark uh, and understands uh, the, the need uh, of, of the uh, submission, but uh, the other technical departments have to also uh, work in sync with the local authority. So the planning has always been, um, uh, or the project has always been planning led, meaning that uh, the, the first entry document is your planning permission. That's the most important document. This is where some of the public and some of the uh, stakeholders do not understand. You know, you, you, you have to have your planning come in first. Now, when your planning is there and when your planning can be done up to mark, up to speed, can be processed properly, planning will uh, improve um, uh, overall. So, uh, like I said, in the early part of it, I was saying that the coordination is important. But uh, to make the capability, the Wi-Fi capability uh, of the authorities uh, is just as important. Uh, that, that is one example. Now, I also give an example which I think is maybe, maybe this opinion is quite sensitive. Uh, but I think it's true. It has been true before and it will still be true and it will be still more urgent during these MCO times. Uh, because I think a lot of other agencies uh, within um, the, the Malaysian government does not understand the role that planners play. Uh, we, 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 we acknowledge there is planning, but we don't understand uh, the role that planning can play more than just controlling development, more than just uh, planning physical development. 
people used to say, uh, you ni uh, MIP president, semua you nak buat. Semua you nak cerita. Tapi itulah kebenaran dia. Memang selain itu, they have to touch everything. From the environment, to design, uh, to the forest, to the coastline. You know, that's what planning is about. Everything needs good planning. Not only does it good need, uh, needs good planning, it also needs good acceptance by all the other agencies. That, that uh, uh, planning is primary, right? And I always use this word, uh, uh, Dr. Alias, that yes. planning, planning is a manifestation of all good things. It's the manifestation of all planning, whether it's economic planning, whether it's physical planning, whether it's social planning. We take those uh, planning job, we take those uh, tasks, and we yeah. manifest it into a planning document. Okay? But if we do that, but if others do not uh, understand, do not accept, maybe on the design part, yes, because they have to follow, but there are more, planning is much, much more than the physical design. This is, this is the thing that I think we need to uh, explain. So I will give an example. If, if, I'm, if I'm over my time, you tell me, uh, Dora. Yeah, I'll give you an example. My recent example is, um, I, I don't know whether there are METI officials uh, attending our seminar, but uh, we had to do meetings, we have to engage with them, we have to explain to them why we must practice during this MCO. It was this thought by the government that only those in construction uh, will be given the priority. Us in the professional services are considered, especially planning, if you're not uh, recognized by CIDB, we can't practice. It's, it's, it becomes project-based. You see, So the thinking of the authorities, the thinking of the government uh, is still very much planning, is still very much physical, very much construction, very much development per se, uh, but not the overall development, not the sustainability part, not the part that actually we can contribute so much during this MCO. So what MIP has done is we have come up with actually... Uh, we didn't come up with the geofencing system. But we, we, the geofencing system already exists. So we took the geofencing system, we take our GIS system, and we said to Plan Malaysia as well, and to the government as well, look, we have a good system. We already have all the database. We already have all the layers. Combine it. Let it be a live monitoring, monitor system. Banyak MOH pun boleh pakai, kan? Police pun boleh pakai. If you're in the red zone, stay home. And then the geofencing will send you a signal. If you're not, so police don't have to check letters, you see. All they have to do is pakai yang KJ buat apps tu, combine dengan kita punya, and we have a live system that can control people movement. So, and then we can also show how, how our planning, the data that we have, the many layers that we have, isn't it? We can even go up to street level. We have kajian yang melibatkan sempadan bandar. We have kajian yang melibatkan sempadan uh, kampung. So we can combine all this information that we have. We are rich in data, Plan Malaysia. Uh, when I say Plan Malaysia, we, I mean planners. Uh, we are rich with data, but um, uh, I, I think the other authorities, uh, they don't share. They, they don't know. Or we, we want to share, but they don't know. Or they take it as just like uh, uh, appendix, you see? So the new normal, planning must be in the forefront. Planning cannot be only on the physical side. Planning must be strategic planning. Planning must be economic planning. Uh, planning must be even political uh, planning. We cannot, you know, we cannot be a small jabatan uh, inside uh, a ministry. Planning must be in a ministry. Planning must lead the country towards proper and sustainable development. There's no other way. We, we have suffered during this COVID-19. Uh, we can't move, you see. But um, uh, obviously, if you look at um, the Ministry of Health, right, they, they have anticipated uh, if this is what happened, uh, the, this is what they need to do. You see? So some people were saying, oh, nak kena provide kan hostel, nak kena provide kan bilik untuk orang sakit. MOH was already ahead. They did their planning properly. But we could have assisted them. We could have assisted them if there is more coordination. You know, so now, like, this is, this is the, the new, this is, the new normal. The new normal is planning every minister in the cabinet, especially the prime minister, especially the government, must put planning in the forefront. I'm sure they do, but they're not using uh, enough of the information that we have. 
you know they they're not using uh, uh all the research that we have done you know i think plan m the number of research that you have um should give me four phds i think huh? should give planners no because there's so much research there's so much knowledge uh, but we don't share or, or even if we share they don't accept they don't see it so this is this is the challenge that i think uh, the new normal must also, also accept uh, we, we can do Tuan Haji Ehsan Tuan Haji Ehsan uh, other than um, focus on the uh, uh, a big scope um, probably uh, Tuan Haji Ehsan also can comment on the current uh, planning activities here let's say on um, development plan uh, social impact assessment study uh, guidelines what what uh, what we uh, private planners or maybe government planners have to change please yes yes we have to we have to change we we cannot see uh, for example even in sia if we take on social impact uh, uh, doctor yes. we have to we have to tune uh, the the comments towards what happens in the physical world when we uh, act or don't act you know that's why for us if we don't comment online if we don't have this kind of meeting for for SIA, it's not going to work. See, uh, there's a, there's a part of our culture uh, uh, is people yes. don't read. People don't read. Unfortunately, people don't read. But everybody likes to comment. Everybody likes to give the opinion. Okay. Sometimes the opinion are, are made on the basis of information that is not complete. Uh, so the the best information the, uh, uh, is when we are talking to each other like this. We take down notes. You know, we write. Uh, that's how. So, uh, you know, we have to communicate better. It, you know, we are talking about MCO and the way forward. We have to communicate better. We have to use what we are doing now. Uh, we have to talk more. We have to WhatsApp more. Uh, we have to, but we have to, uh, we have to allow this medium to be able to make the major decisions as well. So, for example, if Dato KP is here, he can make certain decisions. Uh, that is understood and accepted and won't be questioned later. And this is the culture because in Malaysia, the culture is still, you have to be face to face in a meeting uh, for decisions to be, you know, oh, kita buat dulu keputusan kan? Kita buat dulu uh, this uh, minutes or whatever, nanti bila kita jumpa balik, kita confirm. But some things cannot wait. Yeah, See, the, new norm, exactly. the new normal cannot wait, you know? The new normal cannot wait. The new normal requires you to be up to the mark. So I think in a way COVID-19 ni paksa kita pun jadi more efficient. Paksa kita communicate like we are communicating with, with each other now. Like we have an audience watching us. Paksa uh, audience understand that, that business as usual cannot work. Actually before COVID pun dah, dah kita dah realise that right. Business as usual cannot work. If we want to move ahead, if we want to be a truly sustainable country, if we want to be truly um, a community that cares for each other uh, we, we new normal we, we can't wait we have to do it now you know, our system has to be in place we have to fight for the planning system uh, we have to support each other you know so i know i know this sounds a bit uh alias it sounds a bit uh, like maybe out of topic huh? but money cannot yeah. be the motivation money is only the assistance huh, for us to become better uh, it's only an aid uh, money cannot be the objective. Money cannot be the goal. The actual goal to put in our head is sustainability. The actual goal is to make everyone's life better. Tapi bulan puasa, kita buat ni, kita make everybody's life better. Dapat pahala pula lagi. Alhamdulillah, syukuran. Alhamdulillah. So I think with, with that note, uh, I pass back to you. Lah. Okay, thank you. Tuan Najib Ehsan. Thank you. Now, uh, we shift to... Uh, tadi Najib Ehsan had uh, mentioned on... The, um, Rule of planners, a manifestation of good planning, geofencing, planning um, as a, a forefront. Meaning that uh, we translate uh, planning by other ministries, uh, planning by other sectors into put into the spatial planning, something like that. And I uh, also touch on the one of the subject uh, in relation to uh, urban planning, uh, is, there is a SIA. Now I shift to um, Professor Dr. J, uh, as a Dean uh, Faculty of Architecture, Planning and Surveying UITM. So, Prof. J, Prof. J, are you with me? Okay. Okay, Prof. J, you can comment about the 
uh, planning uh, activities that are the uh, new normal for the system of the communication and delivery uh, inside the uh, university and also uh, outside of the university. Uh, please, uh, Prof. J. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, what uh, this thing, uh, the, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, like forced the university to do after this one is that really to want to, is to focus what the UC is supposed to be doing and then try to figure out uh, to think outside the box, still achieving what we are supposed to be doing, but in a different way. So, of course, like everybody knows that uh, at University, we have the two main components, it is PLO, Program Learning Outcome, that is after they go out, these are the things, the skills that they need to have, and also the CLO, Cost Learning Outcome, which is for individual subject, what are the things that the students need uh, to have. So those two things is still, uh, we maintain that. Uh, we want our planners, uh, the graduates, when they come out, they still uh, achieve uh, the PLO and CLO required uh, in that program. The only thing that has changed is the modus operandi. Before this, everything has to be face-to-face, -face, but starting this semester, uh, we already started three weeks ago, uh, the ODL open and distance learning and ODL here means that uh, we try to do online like this one here and for our students who are unable to get online then we lecture through the WhatsApp or through the YouTube and all other means. Uh, so uh, what it shows to us now is that uh, it's also mentioned tadi macam Tuan Haji Ehsan, okay, uh, so I focus more on apa, in my capacity ni lah. As an academic, because kita dah ada apa, Dato' Anwar dengan Tuan Haji Ehsan, they are in the practice. Uh, but for us, we start to look at, before this, uh, in terms of learning, we are hindered by space. Okay. So somehow, uh, when we learn about planning, it's always the space, okay, kalau class tu, uh, the size is for 30 students. Or the studio too, uh, so maybe uh, the studio in Puncak Alam now much bigger, but the older uh, university, much like USM, the, the studio is much smaller, is cramped and crowded. So we are hindered by space. But now, space is not an issue. So like this one here, we can have like a lecture like attended by maybe 500 people. And through the YouTube, maybe 1,000 people are listening to us. So it's no more like a small one uh, that only a few people can listen at the time. So the thing uh, that we need to worry now is technology. So uh, so with that, this is something that perhaps uh, apa, the technology will be able to develop uh, maybe more effective town planning with this one here. Uh, with this yeah. technology, we can have the progression with uh, the other... Apa? Uh, with the other discipline. So I'll go towards collaboration uh, towards the last one later on. But uh, I'm focused first in terms of the student learning now. Uh, with the ODL, open and distance learning, we have shift our focus. Before this, it's more like the lecturers based. Uh, so basically, when you go to the classes, uh, if you're the student, you go to the classes, you are really uh, held hostage by your lecturer. Her hostage, what it means is that you are going to learn only from that lecturer. Okay. But with this one here, is we have changed kepada what they call a student-centered learning. Student-centered learning is that, so the lecturer is kind of a guide the students, like maybe uh, instead of a like two hours lecture, the lecture may be less than one hour, okay, because uh, we don't want the students to use too much of their data. Uh, then we, uh, Open up for the students that this is a way uh, because before they supposed time planning. Before this, they, if you want to learn planning theory, you learn it from your lecturer. Suppose you are in Puncha Alam, then the, whoever is teaching that planning theory, that's the person you learn it planning theory from. But now, in this time where everybody putting uh, their teaching mode online, our students can learn from lecturer UITM from C. Iskandar or they can learn from lecturers from UM, USM, UTM. So this is a way of sharing our knowledge. And not just that, we can learn from lecturers from all over the world. Okay. So when we get this one here, even now, I sign up for one course at Harvard for free. Of course, you want uh, the certificate, then you have to pay $19.
but you'll be able to see how they do the teaching. So now our students are truly global. So that in a way, this, this COVID-19 year allow them and force them not to just learn from the lecturer who stand in front of them, but to learn from other lecturers from around the world. So in yeah, a way, yeah, from, yeah, uh, this, yeah. this will open up uh, for that. Of course, with this one here, we need to uh, have that flexibility and empathy. So the flexibility and empathy is that we need to know where are the students? Where do they work? Uh, where do they live? Uh, things like that. Because in, in our situation, like uh, maybe uh, the practicing planners, they tend to be uh, in urban areas. But our students, some of our students, they live in rural areas. So they don't have they don't have link, uh, good internet uh, connection and things like that. And this is something that uh, is quite interesting. Uh, this open up the, what they call as interdisciplinary collaboration. Because with COVID-19 here, uh, when we went to the Senate last time, uh, Faculty Science Computer UITM, they have this, uh, this project here, because we have like our, we have 160,000 students scattered around the country. So they have the project to develop to see like, okay, you give me your zip code or you give me your address and they can put it on the map to show that for this student, okay, uh, the connection is, okay, if they, they are using Cellcom, the connection is very bad, but the faculty can identify which telco has the best connection. Or if in their home, the connection is bad, the faculty can tell you that, okay, you go out, uh, maybe like uh, 300 meter, then that is the strongest uh, connection, things like that in your area. So what did, when the dean presented that, and then uh, the TNC said, oh, you should uh, join with FSPU. And we did a collaboration with them. So we sent our lecturers, uh, SU, uh, GIS lecturers, we collaborate with Science Computer and we develop this map. And this is like, uh, Haji Esa mentioned, it's not like geofencing. That geofencing is something that we have, like, we always talk about uh, multidisciplinary collaboration. So in this COVID-19, this is the way for us to discuss uh, and to collaborate with people in, in the other discipline, to come up something that uh, we are doing it for our community. And then, uh, so this is like one example that we did with uh, Faculty Science Computer. And we also, satu lagi kita develop, uh, sekarang ni FSPU, Interior Architecture, develop the testing. Testing booth until upper COVID-19 though, that when the students come back later on, when they go to the hospital, how do they do the testing? So uh, interior architecture come up with the design and then we got we collaborate with hospital UITM and we collaborate with science computer. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, faculty, could you try mechanical? Because then we need to do, okay, what is the right uh, aircon system, things like that, because we are developing this one even though some have been uh, out there in the market who are developing one which is uh, much cheaper. We can put around campuses when they want to do testing. So this is the so-called for the uh, interdisciplinary collaboration on that. And okay. then, uh, then this is something which Dato Anwar mentioned just now about the density. Okay. So the, with the density here that now we know that we develop the city uh, that before this, we tend to be, uh, focus physical, but now there is a, another element for us to consider, the density and then how do the people from the uh, medical fraternity feel? What is the right density for the city? Okay, now before this, I think maybe when talking about the density is we feel is, uh, it's based on what is our understanding, as well as sometimes we look at the economics. Uh, perspective like this, uh, what is the you know, the right one in terms of the cost and things like that? Of course, the developers play a big role, really influencing how the density has to be. Always, they always want a higher density. But now, with this one here, we able to get input from other people, especially from medical fraternity, how to design the city, which is uh, ensure that the correct density that takes care, uh, all the other variables are considered. And so, and come to lastly here, uh, like Haji Esan mentioned just now, that uh, 
uh, we have a lot of data okay uh, a lot of data dulu kita buat ni apa sempadan bandar sempadan uh, kampung okay all of this data that we have so this is uh, now if we can collaborate with other discipline this is opportunity for us to do the big data analysis we always talk about uh, big data analysis big data analysis but somehow uh, i look at it the, the people who are really uh, advanced in terms of big data analytics uh, analysis uh, perhaps uh, fxkm or public science computer okay kalau dekat uitm lah so they're very much into that one but we have a lot of data collaborate with them then this is that we can use all our data and maybe perhaps uh, this one uh, uh, we do our planning analysis beyond the conventional way of doing this one. Okay. Uh, so those are my points, uh, points related to that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Alias. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, thank you, um, Prof. J. Uh, so meaning that, uh, Prof. J, uh, in 45 days uh, from uh, MCO1 to uh, MCO2, MCO3, uh, this, uh, you listen to me, Prof. J? Uh, doctor, yeah, I can listen to you. Things that has changed us. Only 45 days has changed us. Not only UITM or faculty of uh, 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 architecture planning and surveying. But uh, this, I think uh, we also think about the MSO number four. And uh, among us, uh, Plan Malaysia, I think among the click in the uh, MIP, also university, also think um, the new uh, ways on to make sure that the efficiency of the delivery system is still uh, achieved or happen though um, MCO uh, or post MCO uh, after this. Okay. Okay. Now I have to open to the question from the um, participants. Okay. There are a lot of questions. Okay. Give me a few minutes. Okay, um, the question number one the, um, from participants, uh, apakah hal tuju uh, bagi aktiviti publicity awam bagi rancangan tempatan yang disyaratkan di bawah Akta 172? Soalan ni saya nak minta uh, um, yang bagi Datuk Ketua Pengarah Datuk Anwar to answer this. Since Datuk Anwar start his point tadi dengan uh, Akta 172. So, Dato, please uh, answer on the question, apakah hal tuju bagi aktiviti um, publicity awam dalam konteks penyediaan rancangan pemajuan di bawah akta awam itu? Please, Dato, uh, Anwar. Okay, uh, terima kasih, uh, terima kasih, Doktor. I think uh, masa yang tepat juga soalan ditanya because uh, some of our development plan are not in the process of publicity. Uh, for example, uh, rancangan tepatan, uh, rancangan kawasan khas uh, Port Dyson, uh, actually, uh, Launched before this uh, uh, MCO, uh, the 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 earliest decision that we made that uh, I think done by the Plan Malaysia at uh, Negeri Sembilan is to adjourn or to end the process of Seranta according to what are allowed by the Act. Uh, you have you can add another 30, 30 months, uh, sorry, thirty days. Uh, but of course, uh, if this uh, MCO uh, going to be prolonged up to more than 30 days or so happen. This is because, uh, like Dr. Alias said, that uh, whatever we done, we have to follow the rules that because this is, is uh, uh, this uh, law binded activities uh, and we have to follow the procedure. That These are things that we have to think right now. And also we have another uh, rancangan uh, pemajuan, RKK Kuban Krian. They are going to do the seranta right now. So for the yesterday meeting at the our management meeting that uh, we uh, actually allow the process of doing this uh, virtual uh, uh, sranta. I mean, uh, but right now I think uh, the technology to use the technology right now we have to maximum the maximize the uh, communication facilities that uh, engagement and so on can be done through visual. Uh, online, uh, of course, uh, actually we don't need that um, uh, person and so on. But this also can be done actually uh, through uh, video conferences and so on. 
So I think it cannot stop this uh, process. I think this is uh, still we can go uh, proceed with the Santa and so on. Uh, the problem is maybe from that time, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, boleh membawa kepada dua keadaan sama ada penyertaan yang lebih because kita menggunakan maya uh, untuk uh, tujuan santa ataupun mungkin at certain area especially in the rural area or less uh, developed area uh, to get these uh, people go online to discuss to give the uh, uh, pandangan bantahan and so on is uh, quite is very limited because uh, as uh, Dato' Esan uh, sorry uh, Cik Esan said just now uh people don't like to read but people like to comment so these are problems that we have to face this community so this is a challenge that uh, not at the planation alone but all this uh, state office and also all these um, all the pbts eh, local authorities uh, but uh, uh saya mengatakan bahwa uh, process at the new era of the doing the planning is going to be stopped because of this uh PK on and so forth. Uh, sorry, uh, PKP. Um, cuma the cara and the way tu kita kena pasti dan pastinya mesti dinyatakan dengan jelas dalam perwataan ataupun dalam notis yang dikeluarkan dan sekiranya notis ataupun uh, serata tu nak dijalankan secara online, secara bicu dan sebagainya perlu dinyatakan dalam notis sejelas-jelasnya. Uh, itu je, Dato. Ya, Dato adjustment kena buat juga lah bila kita buat secara online. Okey Datuk, saya nak teruskan dengan Datuk. Ada satu soalan because we've got plan Malaysia ni Datuk. Uh, yeah. Soalan dia daripada UITM Perak ni. Uh, anak buah uh, Prof J. What do plan plan Malaysia uh. policies in uh, in in term of data sharing and data accessibility to permit new normal ni? Maksudnya dia discuss dalam konteks kita punya data sharing lah. Uh, especially dalam konteks urban planning punya data sharing. Kita ada, uh, mungkin uh, di pelakat uh, plan Malaysia uh, ada uh, UO. Datuk comment sikit. Okay. Uh, uh, Dato' J, uh, a lot about the data sharing, how we can share the data and also as Sun said that we have a lot of data. The problem is right now I think uh, the, we are facing about this uh, sharing, uh, sharing data. Uh, some of the regulations, some of the rules have to be followed. Uh, uh, as a plan nature, we have IPS data. Uh, whatever the, the program that you want to produce, like to the, the uh, uh, fences of red zone and so on, uh, we need the spatial data. And uh, the, our spatial data to using the iPlan can be shared, actually can be using your headphones right now. You can access all the, the, the map, map. It's, it's all free. Uh, so uh, our, our function or our task right now actually is to update that data, make sure the data is uh, update, the updating is carried on and uh, the, system, the system, our server uh, uh, function, so the people can access to it. Regarding with the MO or cross uh, book tadi pasal uh, big data analysis, yes, this is very important right now because uh, don't you things but to do the analytical this is the most important thing and uh, for untuk makluman untuk the plan Malaysia we have planned for Malaysia urban observatory it's still early stage but actually it's a very good platform that we can share all this data data from these uh, various uh, sources uh, especially in plan Malaysia we do already done this uh, prototype using our own data and we can produce some analysis already uh, like uh, urban trend developments, um, about this uh, sustainable uh, data and so on. Uh, and of course, if we can update this uh, info, um, share with the other like the uh, Dawson and so on, we can have a lot of data uh, to be used for our big data analysis. Uh, is also berbalik juga kepada teknologi and of course uh, the most important thing uh, is just you know also the money is not important but to do to develop in such a big uh, system that uh, we need uh, and also the uh, financial so we are working with the ministry of uh, MOA, mof and also mea uh, in this uh, rmk 12 uh, to speed up 
the process of uh, doing the big city, uh, big city uh, center for uh, especially for the big town uh, in Malaysia. Betul. Uh, for, selain daripada I plan, just, I just, you know, we can share that now in, in this uh, info and so on. Thank you. Okay, Datuk ni ada pertanyaan agak ni permintaan lah daripada uh, the audience ni. Uh, mungkin dalam konteks film Malaysia sendiri ada banyak program mesyuarat, uh, penyediaan rancangan pemajuan, SAE dan sebagainya yang mungkin tertangguh Datuk. Uh, so uh, apa agaknya action di peringkat plan Malaysia lah. Uh, bukan sahaja dalam tempoh post, uh, PKP ni. Uh, tapi mungkin apa, uh, mungkin uh, post PKP. Because uh, uh, mereka pun uh, terlibat dalam konteks ekonomi maksudnya memerlukan proses kelulusan tertentu dalam konteks kewangan. So ada respon sebenarnya daripada kita punya audience ni. Minta plan Malaysia ni kaji balik berkenaan dengan mungkin penggunaan sistem online dan sebagainya bagi tujuan meeting. Tadi ada Datuk ada touch sikit. So boleh uh, further comment Datuk on this? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, all the departments of the ministry have been received uh, directive uh, from the uh, JPA or from the MAMPU that uh, we have to expect that for me. That, that's the most important thing. That uh, whatever uh, function uh, played by the ministry agencies regarding with the how we can uh, speed up our economic developments uh, especially uh, when, when, when you do the project we need the plan we have to approve the plan first before we can start of the planning so we also have the internal meeting uh, yesterday that um, we are trying uh, follow to the rules yang mana tetapkan supaya uh, mengadakan uh, musyawarat musyawarat uh, secara dalaman dan mungkin secara virtual. Eh. Yang pertamanya uh, mungkin dalam mesyuarat-mesyuarat terutama because our meeting actually all the project ni dia import the very big thick report. Eh. So maybe we do the circulation to for the technical comment first and input and so on maybe we can use the video conferences and so we read whatever their comment is and from there we can make decision maybe with the small numbers of participants in the meeting. But the meeting cannot be stopped. I think uh, I agree with you that uh, like SIA meeting and so on. This is where we are trying very hard to how to proceed this one. And so also uh, the first uh, problems we facing about this um, security because uh, of of this uh, planning sometimes uh, involve of this uh, very technical data and need to security features. So right now we the platform only we have only if allowed by the mampu only by Skype uh, for businesses. Okay. It's a very limited uh, limited uh, application, uh, but uh, we can still that uh, just uh, yesterday we doing our management meeting. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, that's all. Thank Sama. you for your um, ex, uh, explanation. So kita pergi kepada question yang lain daripada. There are two platform of question. Satu tadi daripada text box apa ni uh, Webex and another one dalam konteks uh, YouTube. So I think question ni to uh, Tuan Haji Ihsan. Are you with me Tuan Haji Ihsan? Tuan Haji Ihsan? Tuan Haji Ihsan? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Tuan Haji, uh, simple two question baby. Simple question from the audience, not from me. Uh, is it your, uh, from your your clique, okay. Um, Muhammad Nazri, eh? from planner Muhammad Nazri, from uh, Stionsa, I think. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure whether it's question or just uh, views. Isn't all this the new normal? This end of a reaction, a very uh, fundamental, very very philosophy the statement by uh, TPR Nazri. Human being is a creature of social interaction. We need to have interaction physically. That's why the majority of us stays in town and cities, including TPR Nazri Nordini. Okay, that's uh, the first question, uh, General. Uh, the second, uh, I want to go to Johor Baru, okay? Uh, Johor Baru from uh, Palim Hassan, uh, through Webex. Uh, new normal shall focus on how we execute our works, how we interact, or maybe our lifestyle, therefore involve reviewing of planning guideline if necessary. So you can you give just a um, brief comment on these two um, questions? Silakan, Tuan uh, Haji Ehsan. Okay. Brief comment yang payah tu. <laughs> but we start, 
<laughs> we start with the um, the uh, Haji Nazri's uh, reaction. In terms of, um, it's true. It's true. Actually, we, we are we are social animals. Uh, we always have to adapt, um, overreacting to a certain extent, but we need to react properly. Uh, for example, just now when we were um, asking about. Uh, whether publicity awam and and uh, 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 town hall sessions, we can do a combination. You know, I think uh, what we, we uh, I think when when the government opens up, they're going to do a lot of social distancing. Uh, meaning, uh, even if if you can imagine, if you go by public transport, right, instead of two to a seat, maybe one seat each, it's going to cause a lot of uh, issues. Um, a lot of adapting, and this is where uh, we have to be very resilient. So, meaning that if usually one bus can co carry forty people, now it can only carry twenty people. Uh, same with because you you cannot. Adi Nazri's point is that you cannot completely discount the fact that humans need to be together. This is very important. This is a very important concept. Uh, we while we're looking at the uh, at the system that needs to adapt. Uh, working from home that needs to adapt that we interact less, but humans need to interact. That's what makes us humans. You know, uh, I I pose these questions also to to the designers inside this group. Um, we are always planners, huh? We have always been advocates of uh, public place, turning public space into public place, right? How do we make that now? Because we. The, the government is telling us, or the authorities are telling us, we do not encourage mass gathering. This is a planning problem, you know. And they say not not more than so many numbers of people yang mungkin dia belum determine lah. Tapi kalau kita duduk dekat padang atau kita duduk dekat open space, then kita kena berjauhan dengan orang. You know, it's it's contradictory, isn't it? You go to a public space because you want to be uh, and, and to meet other people, and that's what make a city strive. So these are things that planners and, and, and designers must start think, to think of. You know, how do we accommodate this? Um, the the public system, the public transport system. See now, for example, during the MCO, government says one percent per car, right? So that you don't transmit uh, the disease. That's actually encouraging more people to be in a car than in public transport. I know the intent is not that. See, but but the outcome could be like that. So we as planners, if the maybe this is answering uh, Halim's question as well, uh, you know, uh, whether the, whether there is a need for a new guideline, whether there's a need. But see, the the thing with us um, is we have guidelines, but when it comes to uh, implementing the guidelines, uh, this is this is the philosophy. That's why I said if we want to, uh, Doctor Arias, uh, if we we want yeah. to talk about. The future. We want to talk about post MCO. We have to find ways to measure what we do. Now, one of the weaknesses that we have in our planning system, and one is because, like I said, the the authorities pro probably do not give us enough recognition uh, as a whole, right? Except for development control. Secondly, is we cannot prove that whatever good that we have proposed have been implemented. I call this I call this uh, KPI lah. When you kita buat sesuatu, for example, I'm involved with uh, uh, the Central Forest Pine, lah, right? So I must be able to tell uh, in the future uh, at this stage what was planned in the earlier one. How far have things been implemented? Yeah. yeah. And and what next? So th that's why you see uh, for us planners, you see, we always uh, have to deliver. Terms of look, what we have done brings you a quality of life that is better. It doesn't matter economically or whatever. So, uh, if Halib's question is, do we need new garis panduan? Definitely. But I don't want us to be doing garis panduan for the sake of doing garis panduan. See, our garis panduan have to be usable, accepted by society, you know, uh, and accepted by the authorities concerned and used. Bukan tak guna guna. Tapi kita kena digunakan dan nampak juga digunakan. So you know these are the things. And and uh, coming back to Haji Nazri, I agree fully. I think um, uh, this this MCO period, this COVID nineteen, must change us completely. 
we cannot be just saying that oh uh, macam kita dalam kepala otak kita kalau kita taruh MCO is just uh, now we have to work from home no you know the new normal is doesn't mean just work from home the new normal means because of the challenges that we have we cannot have the same way of doing things it's not business as usual it's business unusual how we do business our attitude and uh, I, I saw some comments was uh, i think it was by shafiq about uh, development okay. development ni tak boleh kita terlalu uh, centric kepada uh, development means money you know development means profit uh, because that the, the, we need money we need money uh, there's no doubt about it because we live in that system but we have to find a way like, like i said to adjust that our aim what we do our objective our goal is different from just making money because we live in a capitalistic system so in the in the new in the new um, normal like i said you know uh, if we change we change that slightly we just change that slightly meaning uh, if i want to do a research i want to do a good research so that everybody can use it you know not worry about when my payment is coming back so that one that one is kena macam kena as taken maknanya you the service provider uh, dr elias uh, must ensure the moment i submit my work and it's of of certain quality you must be paid something like that lah super juga dengan yang physical planning kan whenever they submit must, but us us because i'm talking mainly to a planning audience we must up the ante you see we cannot do business as usual uh, our our business must be our aim our objective semua kena naik dua tiga tokoh sebab kita punya cabaran telah bertambah thank you dah Okay, thank you, Haji Isan. So, uh, the next question uh, from uh, Al Sili. Uh, okay, um, saya baca. Eh? Uh, in order to uh, for smoothen this process uh, during MCO, post MCO, MCO, should review the tele telecommunication in the next future to upgrade the high uh, intensity of of five six G, five six G high fi fiber in order for the work uh, or meeting uh, 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 oh, ni dia sentuh pasal i think the, the question uh, i'm i'm posed to um, prof j prof j you listen to me prof j uh -huh, yes okay, the question on still the, the question on the i think maybe technology telecommunication people talking about the F, uh, intensity in terms of the speed uh, 5g 6g uh, 7g in the future so um in uh, to add the uh, question by Al, Miss Al, can we put or not the um the infrastructure and technology probably as one of the game changer to practice the new normal not only in the content urban planning but in in other fields as well so can you comment on this uh yes i think uh i agree with that that now uh Technology is the game changer. So at least now we mentioned, uh, like I mentioned just now before this, when we want to conduct classes, it's always we are limited by, uh, you're basically uh, influenced by your, your, the size of your class, physical class. If it is built for 30 students, then only 30 students can fit there. And then you're also by the who's uh, assigned to teach you that. So I give that one example. Now, uh, after it's COVID-19 here, uh, it's not limited to 30 students. Okay, so now certain classes can go to two or 300 students. Uh, we go through the Google Meet Google Classroom. So we can students from like uh, some of our classes at FSPU now, instead of just students from Puncha Alam, then we can include students from Puncha, uh, from Sri Iskandar as well as in, uh, in Samarahan and other campuses. So uh, now and then, uh, instead of just learning from one lecturer assigned to teach that uh, that subject, then we can learn from other lecturers from other universities from uh, other places. So yes, now the main thing is technology. If you have the technology, then uh, you will be able to, to do wonders on that. So uh, so back to here. I think even with this one here, the package transaction economy announced by the PM. One of it is uh, for, uh, I think about 500 million uh, uh, to upgrade our technology. Okay, uh, so so that is like uh, the starting point. And I'm sure after this one here, when we start to look at 
uh, that technology plays such a big role that when you have something uh, pro uh, crisis like COVID-19, yeah, if you have the technology, then we'll be able to uh, to get uh, many things will we start going. Okay? And that I, I think, yes, uh, it start with the education that like we're going to see, uh, like the university, the university has started the classes uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, the schools are unable to start. And the reason they say is but 30% uh, of, uh, I think when did they say about 30, 40% of the students are unable to have access. They don't have internet, they don't have computer, things like that. But the universities are able to do that because when we did our online uh, classes last week, uh, so we collected all the data from all the faculty. So for uh, the whole UITM system, so we have 160,000 students we found out that 95% of our students had access to online learning. So that's a big number. And now we're going to, to improve on that technology. So with this technology now, they already started in the university. Uh, okay, now it started in the university. I'm sure after this one, we'll go to uh, Sekolah Menengah and then Sekolah Rendah. Then these are the people who will go out after this. Okay, and then this this is the planners. That's that's what I say. Like some of the students, they are the uh, when they saying, okay, why going to do everything online? Some of them say, uh, can we uh, do cuti has this semester? Okay, some of them they want the easy way out. Uh, but uh, we advise them. They say this is a challenge for you. This is an opportunity for you to be challenged. Like you already learned all your life from the sekolah rendah sampai sekolah rendah masuk university, everything face to face. Now we are forced to do online. So perhaps challenge yourself. So these are the people, when they start to see this, when they go out later on, they graduate, when they say, okay, now uh, they start to say, okay, we have started the new, we learn through the ODL, then perhaps this is some of the things that they will bring into the practice of time planning uh, in the future. Then uh, I think they will also will push for the government to upgrade our, our technology. And I think, uh, as mentioned to you, uh, FSKM, they, they did the map of apa, coverage, telco coverage. Okay, we found that in Semenanjung Malaysia, all areas have coverage. So that means they cannot complain, oh, we don't have this one. It's just that maybe that certain telco does not have coverage in your area, but another telco has that one. And we have the data, uh, the coverage to support that developed by science computer and assisted by FSP. Only Sabah and Sarawak, then we have certain areas that don't have the coverage and the students that we, we bring them to the campus in Samarahan or, uh, or in Kota Kinabalu for them to learn uh, over there. So yes, I think uh, technology will, uh, is a game changer uh, for town planning after this one. And then with this technology here, we can do what they call as a big data and, and interdisciplinary collaboration. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. J. Uh, means that uh, although the coverage of the 5G uh, telecommunication for the whole Semenanjung, uh, except Sabah Samsawa, still needs uh, some improvement. Uh, but the focus uh, still must be given to the uh, rural areas, Prof. J. Uh, yes, uh, Prof. J. And the second question, uh, uh, addition, additional question, actually. Uh, in terms of the urban planning uh, student, uh, we train them to be one day uh, excellent uh, town planner. Uh, during uh, using the new normal of during PKP, probably we can uh, do online uh, lecture for um, theoretical subjects. Eh? But for design, how you how you handle uh, at the university level handle this? How to train students about the design, about their layout, how to do the master plan. Can you, you give us a brief response on this uh, project? Thank you. It's just that uh, different telco is stronger in different areas. Uh, so they are able to tell you, uh, you know, uh, certain for this rural area A, uh, the strongest telco is uh, Cellcom. So rural area B, Cellcom may not be strong, but message is there, uh, things like that. So that's the for the peninsula. Uh, so back to the question on uh, design. 
Yes, uh, that's our greatest challenge uh, for this semester. Uh, the design-based courses uh, that the if you use that online, it's good for your cognitive skill. But psychomotor skill, like in terms of sketching, uh, the best way is through face-to-face. Uh, -face that uh, they are there. So what we do is that uh, Alhamdulillah, the university gave us flexibility. That is, uh, kalau you ITM kita ada what they call as 3A and 3B. So 3A adalah selepas raya, they continue dengan ODL and apa, distance learning. Okay. 3B are those courses that we feel that the students have to be back here. And so uh, these students are allowed to be back on campus, but we scrutinize the courses too. So macam Tom planning, uh, we recall back the students, only 20% of the students are called back. Okay. Uh, but for landscape architecture, they decided not to call any of their students back. So nanti we're going to see lah how they are able, they say they're able to do that one lah. Uh, even the psychomoto that uh, the students uh, be able to do at home. So they will ask them to, you know, to record the sketch when they do the sketches and their family members will record how they sketch that one and then they will be able to provide uh, comments on that. Because I think this is something that when I, I went for entrepreneurship course in in Dublin, like in 2011, like uh, everything then at that time, they asked us to video it. So rather than present face to face, even though the lecture is in front of you, they asked you to do uh, everything uh, through the video. So this is like this call of uh, you know, using that technology. So we have that flexibility for the design based. Uh, what we do is if the lecturer wants the student to come back, we allow them to come back last year, but they come back maybe for only one week. Because our main concern is to reduce the number of students who congregate in a uh, we don't want we want to reduce the crowd. Okay. So after we do that one, we are able to reduce. So for FSPU, uh, we calculated that of the in Sha Alam Puncha Alam of the 6,500 students, uh, I think uh, only about 1,000 were written. But even this 1,000, they don't come. Uh, Serentak, they are kind of in stages. So maybe uh, 300 students, they come for one week and then after that another 300. Because our concern is still the health of the students. Kita tak mau ada ni lah, ada outbreak nanti. Uh, but we still allow flexibility. And satu lagi, the semester juga sepatutnya habis pada Julai. Tetapi certain courses, because the design ni, because you don't deal face to face, so you have to do student, one student at a time. One each, one each, one each kan. Uh, we allow them additional time. So instead of semester ni 14 minggu, the students learn for 20 weeks to ensure that uh, the CLO uh, course learning outcome to the chapai. So we provide the flexibility and also we recall uh, students yang necessary to be back for like design courses if uh, it's necessary. Architecture, they call uh, recall quite a number of their students. Paling ramai yang recall balik architecture lah, tapi macam landscape dia tak panggil langsung. Town planning, uh, very small number is called back. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Jay. Um, saya nak mungkin-mungkin last comment uh, daripada um, uh, sebelum kita pergi penutup from uh, Dato' uh, Muhammad Anwar ya. Eh? Dato' Anwar, you with me, Dato'? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Uh, saya rasa untuk soalan, uh, Dato', Dato', uh, Dato', ya, ya. Dato', uh, siap. Uh, before the um, penutup, saya nak bagi satu soalan daripada, ini mungkin enam planners lah eh. Soalan daripada yeah. Encik Syafiq uh, Burhanuddin, uh, Senior Research Officers daripada Institute of Islamic uh, Understanding, uh, IKIM eh. So, soalan dikemukakan daripada YouTube. Uh, dia tanya soalan yang simple tapi mungkinlah dia kedudukannya dia di institut a uh, Jakim uh, IKIM ni more fundamental lah. Dia tanya uh, apa maksud pembangunan? Uh, kalau kita ikut dan tengok akta 172 tu ada term lah pembangunan di bawah section 2 ingat saya. Jadi bila dalam konteks new normal ni, new normal ni adakah kita kena redefine dia punya term of uh, pembangunan? Tadi Tuan Haji Isan ada sebut sedikit pasal bila sebut pembangunan tak disebut pasal duit saja ha, kan 
So mungkin um, ada pandangan umum daripada Datuk lah. Kalau kita nak lihat sama dalam konteks perundangan, the first word uh, Datuk mention peringkat awal tadi dengan the terms of definition of the development uh, uh, selepas kita mungkin uh, meletakkan uh, new normal dalam konteks uh, perancangan madar Datuk. Sila komen Datuk. Terima kasih Doktor. Uh, I think everybody knows about isu pembangunan. What is uh, what happen? Whatever, whatever activity we are doing on the land is a development. Okay, we do the housing, uh, pembukaan tanah, and so on. It's all development. Uh, um, I think the the the, the dalam akta pun menyatakan dengan jelas lah dengan session apa yang dimasukkan dengan pembangunan. Tapi apa yang di di mungkin jelas ataupun di diperincikan di sini ialah Uh, sejauh mana kita melihat perancangan dalam era baru. Jadi, ya, uh, uh, Cik Esan sebutkan tadi, uh, whatever we lakukan dalam pembangunan, kita kena letakkan uh, nilai, nilai plan itu sendiri di peringkat hadapan. Uh, whatever you buat pembangunan, uh, housing development, you buat uh, industri, you buat commercial and so on, we must put di what we call this, this uh, the concept of planning so at the first places uh, di mana uh, menggunakan garis panduan, garis panduan yang boleh memberikan uh, yang melihat jauh ke depan melihat apakah is, uh, permasalahan-permasalahan yang telah uh, terjadi dan bagaimana kita dapat membentuk way forward we have to go to selain daripada kalau kita lihat daripada uh, mas, apa tu, definasi pembangunan itu sendiri dalam uh, tafsiran uh, ayat-ayat Al-Quran ataupun hadis-hadis Nabi jelas meletakkan bahawa uh, manusia sebagai the main player. Saya suka quotekan satu uh, satu saya, saya terlupa daripada mana saya ada satu, satu video mengatakan bahawa alam hari ini gembira hidup tanpa manusia. Angin dan air begitu gembira tanpa dan apabila keadaan telah pulih, kita kena ingat bahawa mereka, kita bukanlah manager dia orang. Kita adalah penumpang, mereka adalah empunya. Jadi, gunakan konsep ini, kita kena lihat balik arah tuju pembangunan yang kita laksanakan. Pastikan berbalik kepada konsep. Kalau di, di PK Plan Malaysia, kita menggunakan konsep uh, pembangunan uh, sejagat, iaitu hubungan manusia dengan manusia, manusia dengan alam sekitar dan uh, manusia dengan Tuhan itu itu yang lebih yang lebih penting. Yeah. Okey Datuk, uh, terima kasih. Uh, sepatutnya dah tadi the last question tapi ada permintaan khas ni. Uh, daripada uh, PBT agaknya kepada Datuk ni. Uh, bila kita how how planning plan Malaysia ni uh, can initiate uh, initiate a new normal procedure uh, dari sudut proses kelulusan perancangan. Dengan Datuk dan tadi kurang sentuh pasal proses kemudian merancang, WAC dan sebagainya. Macam mana new normal ni? Uh, tadi mungkin dah sebut online, di peringkat mesyuarat, yeah. di peringkat OEC, di peringkat planning permission tu macam mana Datuk? Boleh Datuk komen sedikit pasal ni? Uh, saya sebenarnya tak ada authority to talk about the process dari PBT but uh, since uh, plan uh, already joined the uh, KPKT uh, attend a certain, a certain uh, meeting di peringkat pengurusan tertinggi uh, kerana ni di peringkat KPKT atau OEC online uh, sedang merangka satu proses bagaimana dalam masa yang terdekat untuk mempercepatkan ataupun supaya proses kebenaran merancang ini di, boleh diteruskan dengan uh, tata cara tata cara uh, kemudahan kemudahan akan di, dikeluarkan uh, supaya uh, perancangan ataupun uh, kebenaran merancang khususnya di PBT PBT itu dapat dilaksanakan. Uh, jadi kita tunggulah mungkin dalam masa terdekat dan tapi dalam uh, semalam saya rasa ada satu uh, kelulusan untuk uh, CCC iaitu kelulusan salah satu yang sebagai essential uh, PBT PBT boleh uh, ataupun uh, all the see out there uh, boleh uh, ke tapak untuk membuat CCC. Ini salah satu daripada yang telah di, diputuskan tapi saya belum uh, boleh beri yang mutamat mungkin ada satu uh, circulation ataupun satu pemberitahuan akan diberitahu selepas pada ni. Ya Datuk, dalam konteks Plan Malaysia pun juga akan ada kita boleh bagi mungkin uh, idea ataupun nasihat kepada pihak-pihak pihak, 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 pihak kuasa pihak tempatan di Malaysia dalam konteks mengimprovekan uh, proses kelulusan perancangan itu ya. Eh? 
Okay, itu. Kita memang okay, uh... bersama dengan uh, OEC, OEC kita ada di PKT dan uh, kita sentiasa memberikan pandangan dan juga menyuarakan permintaan dan juga hasrat uh, planner-planners kita dekat luar sana. Eh. Uh, okay, mungkin saya boleh pergi pada penutup tadi. Uh, belum lagi tu. Rumusan. Ya. Belum. Uh, nanti nanti saya belum. Lepas tu akan penutup last kali. Okay. Uh, so I have to say so sorry to the audience and participant outside whether you use the uh, YouTube or you use the Webex. There are many questions asked here. I'm so sorry. Uh, we take note of the your all uh, question posts views and uh, pandangan dikemukakan due to limitation of time we can uh, accommodate you okay now we to go to the last um, round uh, probably we start with the dr j first the j and uh, uh, ajit khan within uh, one two minutes of j okay okay project and after that ajit khan um, uh, conclusion remark from you in terms of the uh, probably the most significant that we have to change in terms of the month planning, one, we medium term. And the second one, probably on the, um, uh, uh, the requirements to accommodate the expectation of the efficient new normal about one planning, what are, in terms of the, uh, you can, uh, Prof. J can, can touch a little bit uh, on the technology. I agree with Dr. J about the technology is a game changer. And um, must, the most important things to be done in the context of the, um, to uh, make sure that the efficient of the normal in the context of planning. Can you comment for the last one? Boleh repeat, eh, kurang dengar tadi tu. Okay, Prof. J, uh, the first significant activities. Tadi kita dah bincang banyak, we discuss mm -hmm. from uh, Dato' KP, uh, Jason, there are many activities you have to do that. But you need to change, uh, probably gradually, uh, because uh, Prof. J also mentioned on the combination in terms of mode, uh, uh, lecture mode, some have to go to come to university physically. What are the uh, the most significant activities? Uh, Dr. J can comment uh, down context uh, university and also outside the university, uh, down context urban planning process. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, from me personally, uh, through this experience here, is that uh, during this COVID-19 crisis here, uh, it shows that uh, technology plays uh, such a big role, uh, really, uh, especially in education and also in uh, in other things that we do day to day. Lah. So if yeah, we are ready to embrace technology and then after that, we, we improve uh, connectivity, then inshallah, a lot of things will be able to, to get it done. Uh, dan satu lagi, uh, look at kat sini tadi adalah uh, interdisciplinary uh, collaboration. Okay, because I think we always talk about apa interdisciplinary collaboration, uh, things like that. But I started to see that with this COVID-19 year, uh, planning, uh, at least kita daripada Alam Bina, start to collaborate with people from outside the then be able to get something uh, done here. And uh, the third one is that uh, we call that this opportunity for us to embark on the big data analysis really to apa, with this uh, collaboration using technology and employing big data then we able to come up with a much better analysis which will make our you know, our planning uh, be much better and then uh, have a greater impact uh, on the public okay, thank you prof jay uh, Tuan Ajisan, can you comment on the, um, the most significant activities to make sure they, they're efficient, new normal in the context of urban planning process? Yeah, please, okay. Uh, uh, saya penutup. Okay, boleh dengar eh? Uh, boleh, Ken, boleh. Okay, okay. I think I, I fully agree. I think there was a lot of comments was asking. So, uh, we have to be more efficient and more effective. Meaning, it's, it's no point if we talk about the new system uh, the new online system, uh, but, but you know, we're still doing things uh, in the old ways. So I think uh, what, what planners and what the players want is actually decision making online, eh? uh, wherever where they have meetings, can be done effectively and efficiently. So I think that's one of the main thrusts. Lah. But I would like also to add that um, uh, I think Plan Malaysia, post-COVID-19, post post-MCO, uh, must take the and become a leading department uh, 
uh, whether it's through the Kementerian. I mean, I hope I hope there are government people listening here. I hope there are politicians listening here. How do we make uh, Planalisia uh, as a leading department? Uh, and 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 just like just like uh, the planning department inside the local authorities, lah, they are the lead department, so that it is planning driven. So our economic activity is planning driven. Our social life is planning driven. Uh, that, that that I hope can can change because. If you look at successful countries, uh, uh, they are driven by planning. And um, I would like to also uh, 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 emphasize that, for example, um, this is quite important. I take a little bit of time now. Uh, uh, we have only uh, 30 seconds for you, Raja Hassan. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> we have to consider the fact that we, we have a housing problem in Malaysia. Right? We have not enough housing, not housing and not enough homes, but we have excess of office space and commercial space. So in our new new normal, how do we use back these these spaces? You know, and I, I just want to show. I don't know whether this can be seen. This is a book. It's called City Limits. Okay. This, this book uh, uh, actually is very good. Uh, uh, what they have done in Melbourne and before Melbourne became. Uh, a sustainable city is they are reusing back spaces. So that's an important thing like for planners. We have to, to go beyond convention. We have to think of uh, how do we work um, outside the normal? How do we use space? Jangan, jangan masalah tak ada rumah buat rumah. Sekarang ni masalah dia rumah banyak. Kan? Uh, I mean rumah tak cukup. Tapi office dan commercial lebih. How do we accommodate this? So I think um, uh, last but not least though, we have to change. We, we. Don't only Agree expect the environment to change. Don't only expect the system to change. We have to change and we also have to adapt to the new normal. Meaning that change us first to change environment, to change other people. You agree? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, last word from uh, Dato' KP, uh, Dato' Omar Anwar. Tadi pun, Haji uh, 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 ada certain rule by the Plan Malaysia as a Ketua Skim Kimatan di Malaysia. Boleh Datuk bagi dia punya final uh, panggil uh, penutup lah, uh, final remark daripada Datuk berkenaan subjek matter kita lah. Silakan Datuk. Kurang mendengar sikit Datuk, takut Datuk um, uh, unmute tu. Uh, mute. Okay, so. Hassan, eh, I think uh, very big uh, things that uh, expected from the plan farm, obviously. But uh, it's a very tough, uh, very good things that uh, that we have to move uh, with the new normal process of planning. Uh, but uh, for the conclusion, I think I, uh, on the behalf of the government side, government sector, I think four points I will, I will like try to emphasize. The first thing I think for the discussion right now, okay, uh, using the geo database or what is already uh, for the uh, assessment, for the, doing the planning using the data. And this actually we need sharing policies within the government sectors. This is, I think, we, we should be emphasis. The second thing, uh, we doing the, the FGDs and so on, we will work with the virtual and so on. But of course, it's very much depend on the communication facilities and so on that uh, the other agencies or the ministry concerns in the government sector have to look into. The second thing is uh, how this, this, this planning through these meetings such as online and so on. And so, well, I think uh, all the departments right now, all these, uh, the government should look into uh, mewujudkan satu proses procedure bagaimana boleh kita memudahkan tidak hanya bergantung kepada scope of businesses and so on so this is i think yang to look into the second thing the last one if we can reduce the procedure we can within this uh, uh, moc uh, why don't we continue this one after uh, after the process or as a new normal of the process so we can do that with the original directive. Maybe this is a very good thing that this COVID-19 uh, was uh, a pleasure to us to 
uh, think about the new procedure, the, the easier, uh, the faster, and uh, whatever uh, to speed up the development process and so on. So I think it is a good thing that we should continue uh, whatever uh, for the post COVID-19 and so on. So I think uh, not only the plan measure, but uh, the governments look into these four factors. So I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dato. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The audience from not only from Malaysia, we have um, audience from Melbourne, audio also audience from uh, United Kingdom, uh, from University of uh, Oxford Brookes, the United Kingdom. So I'm sorry, uh, we have to uh, close this uh, uh, program, and uh, I can't uh, list out all the um, points addressed by the um, uh, our panelists. My my uh, uh, closing remark here is. This forum has successful to highlight and list out some ideas. Probably we need to have uh, another sitting as, suggest as suggested by KP in relation to the new normal in planning and hope this will inspire and motivate all of us to change our attitude, behavior, and make it good things as a norms in exercising the system, process, activities of urban planning, particularly in Malaysia. So before we end, on behalf of our organizing, uh, organizer, MIP, team of MIP Training Center, and Board of Town Planners Malaysia, I would like to thank all the panelists, uh, Dr. Wama Anwar, Tun Hadi Isan, Prof. J, for your views, and uh, also to participants, thank you for your participation and attention. And the last remark from me, allow me to post you food for thought, I think very relevant to the topic of the normal. Taken from Al Quran, Surah Ar Rad, uh, part of verse uh, 11, mentioning that God shall not change the fate of man until they change it themselves. Lakstin, fikir fikirkan. Jadi, with that note, saya akhiri uh, town hall forum entitled uh, "What Is the New Normal for Urban Planning?" With Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Bye bye.